And with the breeze at their backs, the home team kick things off. Fiji Barty to start with the ball in their hands. And a strong run, bringing it outside of their own 20. First up, the King, Vuni Yayawa, one of the inclusions. There are several players who've come back from the UK to be involved today for both teams, really strengthening the lineups on both sides. I saw Vuni Yayawa in the NRL with the Warriors for a handful of games back in 2020. He's wearing the number 10 today for Fiji Barty. To it more in the starting lineup with the nine on his back as the dummy half, and this is good meters on offer, pushing into the breeze first up by Fiji. And the kick to come from just inside enemy territory from Brandon Wakem down towards Alex Johnston. What a reception he's getting here. And Marcus By, a legendary figure in PNG rugby league, spoke about the fact if he can become the greatest try scorer in NRL history in the next few years, maybe even next year, and go past the great Ken Irvine, then he'll just become a legendary figure in these parts as well. Oh, he sure will be. He already would be. South Sydney, uh, they're a club that have a huge following nearly anywhere you go in the world where they know rugby league. And to become the greatest try scorer in the game is an incredible achievement. And I've got no doubt if he stays injury free or plays the required games, he'll get there. I love Jack DeBellin as well. Second game for him in PNG colours. Ipape, the number nine, finds Lamb. And Labour, who had a sensational debut a fortnight ago, drops it on the boot for Jareem Buller, the RLPA Rookie of the Year. How are these conditions, you ask, in Port Moresby? It's hot and humid. And as Freddie suggested, the potential of a thunderstorm may be late in the game or hopefully after full time. 30 degrees, feels like 36, and the breeze always a factor here. There's only 10 k's an hour. Look at this defence from PNG, and they oh. think they've created an error, and they can celebrate one as well. well listen, Careful, to the, boys. listen to the crowd. They love contact more than tries. A big hit gets a louder cheer than a try. It's incredible. Great defence, great defence. It was a great kick. A two-pass kick brought the whole... Fiji defence line up, kicked him behind, then they just numbered up on the Fijians coming out of their own end and end up forcing the error. Good plan, well executed. Look at that, three and four in the tackle, plenty of pressure on the ball. Force the error. And Donahue could not hold on. What can they do from the centre field scrum from 10 out? They load up on the left hand side. Johnston! Alex Johnston, another try! He scores them for fun, the South Sydney superstar. And he's doing it for PNG. Yeah, the key is here, the, the creative players playing together. Firstly, Lachlan Liam goes far enough into the line to attract defenders, but not too far to sell a dump. And then he finds his fullback. We're just talking about his try scoring exploits, Alex Johnson. And he gets over. And he just, whenever he's in the clear, Alex Johnson, very hard to have that slide defence because he gets on the outside and it's just absolutely lightning. What a great start to PNG Kummels. The error early. Well, he's normally on the end of them, Alex Johnson. He's normally the one on, on the wing. This time he's playing the role of Latrell Mitchell. He just gets on the outside of his... It's Ravalawa there, Freddie. He's, gone, he's playing in the centres. So the big Fijian winger for the Dragons playing in the centre, Simon Jersey 5 there. He may be tested because probably technically wise, defending in the centre is probably the hardest position on the field. It was a nice decoy run. We got the attention of Ravalawa. Everything legal and then it was just Johnson's speed. He couldn't check and mark the decoy and then also match Alex Johnson for speed. And talk about scorers. Reese Mann, one of the great goal kicks. I think he held the record for a while, about 30 in a row. He once kicked 41 in a yeah, row. Well, there you go, 41. <laughs> and he started out as a rookie with the Bulldogs, kicking a stack in a row as well. We put the mocker on him, though. You blokes, <laughs> red hot. You are cruel. Red hot.
So a dream start for the home team here. Look at this kickoff hold up. Oh, bravely taken by Johnston, wiped out in midair. Asking for a penalty, but there's nothing forthcoming there. Must be a different rule when it comes from a kickoff as opposed to a kick in general play. We'll go to mid for that. <laughs> Long run, but there's nowhere to go for Valentine Richard. He felt that too. Valentine. Three men in the tackle. DG looking to bounce back from that early setback. Here's the Bellin. 200 plus games now for St. George Illawarra. Pape finds his kicker off the outside of the boot. From Labour. And a good safe take by Ravalawa. So a good starting position here for Fiji. Made the quarters of last year's World Cup. They led New Zealand 18 to 6 at half time in that game as well. Gave them a real fright before being knocked out. And again, the ball is jolted loose. Three in the tackle. And Wunga Blake this time makes the error. They're really physical. Start the game, the opening six minutes, PNG Kummels. They just, as Freddie said, they love the contact. Really looking forward to watching the dummy half number nine there for PNG. Edward Abape. Huge, huge reps. I think last year in the World Cup, in the team of the, the tournament, he was hooker. Yeah, relegated Harry Grant to the bench in that team. He doesn't go too bad, Harry, either. Not a bad player. <laughs> There's been a lot of talk about him getting a, a crack in the NRL, maybe with the Dragons, because Shane Flanagan was part of the coaching staff with PNG and knows what threat he possesses. PNG's number nine, 28 years of age and player of the year in the English Championship with the Lee Leopards before their promotion. He is lightning at a dummy half. Absolutely lightning. Any quick play of the ball? That's him to get out. Michael Blake trying to get some of his own back there with Tane Milne. Valentine Richard keeps on having a go, trying to crack them in the middle, but there's not much room on offer for the front rower. Here's Lamb going to work, left-hand side for Johnston again. Not a whole lot of go forward on this set after the error from Wunga Blake. A good tackle, but the offload is available. Second phase footy for the hosts. Benji Cont to play it. Trying to milk a penalty. Let go of the footy and the referee wasn't having it. He just let it go, mate. He just let it go in his head. Trying to rip the ball out and get a play of the ball. He's pretty careless. Bit of feeling in this one. There's been some push and shove. The first error. When the Fijian, is it 5'8", Kurt Donahue, when he dropped the ball, there was a bit of push and shove. And Geez, these two forward packs going at it. It would be awful watching that, <laughs> could you imagine? Head to head between these two countries. Led three wins to two by PNG. Oh, what a run by Sivo. And the chant might just go up for the Parramatta start. And the ferocity in the tackling. DeBellin in company with Russell there. A couple of Dragons hunting as a duo. Six again for Fiji Party. So they'll get their be best field position of the game so far. Wakem for Donahue. Oh, they're targeting the 5 8, aren't they? The King. You're taking on the King. And now DeBellin fires out of the line. Jackson, now they go left for Donahue once more. Quick. Service for Mill, knocked on and left behind. That will be PNG footy. There's a double knock on there. Well, already you can see the difference in the teams. You can see the, the influence of Lachlan Lamb. Only nine minutes in, but some of their attack, the Fijians, they look disorganised. Or on the other hand, the PNG Kummels, looks like everyone knows their roles. And they've got some key players who have played a fair bit of footy together. Even watching the PNG defence, Joey, there's two and three in a tackle. The way they peel out of the tackle, 
there's obviously, I know Adrian Lamb's done a lot of coaching up there, but um, just those basics of getting the game right, they do that very well and quite easily. It comes natural. Not so much for the Fiji side at the moment. Yeah, that halves combo for PNG. Played a lot of footy together at the World Cup. Partnered again here, Lamb and Labour. Compared to Donahue and Wakeham coming together for this Pacific Championships. Lovely service again from the number nine for DeBellin. Whacked as he got the pass away. Awkward looking play the ball. Look out, out of the line again and creating an error. What a massive hit. There's the king, all shook up. Oh, he did some damage then. Gumi Yayawa. And they, uh, they ham up. Who does the king play for? He plays in the UK. Oh, OK. With uh, Salford. He's going to be joined by Nene McDonald next year at that club. He just signed a two-year extension, Juni Ayawa, with Salford. And Nene McDonald's about to jump ship to that club on a four-year deal from Leeds. It's a shame we haven't seen more of Nene McDonald in oh, Australia. Remember him coming through, Freddie? Yeah. Looked like he was going to be anything. He was at the Roosters as a kid, went to the Cowboys, the Dragons. Dragons. Such an athlete. He played nearly 100 games in the NRL for five different clubs. Ravalawa, good strong run, targeting the outside backs. A bit more post contact metres on offer in that part of the ground. And there is in the middle at the moment. Hello. Yawa, oh, it gets rid of Russell. And gets the offload away for Buller. Second phase footy for Fiji. Sakuru is on the right edge. The rookie gets his first touch. And Gary Gary helping out at dummy half there. He's 19 years of age. PNG won't want to give him any open space to exploit. They go to the other side now. Buller's pass was flat for Wunga Blake. He's got Sivo outside of him. And they keep going that way towards Micah's side. Buller's kick's pretty handy too. Here comes Sivo. Where's the footy? Who wants it? This may be a sin bin. Maybe a penalty try. Micah's asking for it. Well, you missed it originally, Micah. Have a no try. I believe the legs the <laughs> Jareen Buller got a couple of touches in that set of six, and you can just see how much more dangerous they are when he's around the ball. Well, he's playing like a halfback. Digs into the line, which brings up the outside defence. Alex Johnson's, he's got no depth. He was playing at the run threat. They're all onside. The defender is committed to the arena. We're playing at this point. Yeah, well, Nano McDonald, you can see, he changes his line. He looks over his left shoulder and he sees Sivo coming. Whether they're going to say they're shoulder sh to shoulder. Players are shoulder to shoulder at this point. We're playing right. Rounding that with a torso. Nene McDonald. It was enough to constitute grounding in a game last week, but uh, is it enough this time for the bunker? Well, I think Donnie gets there first. He gets a hand on it. Just looking at the term and what about the back of your torso? The buttocks. And the hip region. Ball gets squeezed into the turf. Is this enough for a grounding? Well, they're looking at it. Still going. No yeah, that's a try. No grounding at this point. It's going to be a try. 5'8", Kurt Donahue. Alex Johnson, he goes for the ball and he misses. Yeah, that's a try. First try for his country for the 21-year-old Kurt Donahue from the Dolphins, playing in the halves, and all of a sudden we're all locked up in Port Moresby. It was the class of Jareen Bullock. He handled three plays in a row. He played the short ball to his back row and then double up around the, the short side 
And the key was he, he got the ball and went into the line, which brought up the outside defence. Alex Johnson, he was thinking it was a run threat, so he was he was quite shallow. And then Mike Siva. And Donahue gets it. Yeah, Ben rolls over the ball. The other classy part about Jareen Buller was away, he had the ball in two hands, which brought the centre and winger up, and, and they had to turn and chase. He had a couple of options as he went to the line, and the kick was the best one. Ended up coming up with the try. Wakeham trying to give his team the lead. What a kick this is, keeping it low, and he's drilled it. So a converted try to the Fiji party. Give them a narrow lead here. Silencing Port Moresby for a brief moment. A contact again. Only out to the 10-metre line off the kickoff. Pape standing his ground in the middle. Off the back of those points, they now get the piggyback. So that was Sakuru in Jersey 12. I, th I think his uncle, Colin, played for, for the Dragons back in the day. Big, yeah. big front rower. 11 games it was back in the mid-90s. He's a big back rower. Well, how good was last night's footy? The Kiwi Ferns got their first win over the Jillaroos since 2016 with that inspiring 12-6 victory. And in the men's, the Kangaroos stormed home with a dominant 36-18 victory heading into the Pacific Championship final next week. Can the Kiwis turn things around with a win on home soil, Freddie? I was watching the games last night and listening to Billy Slater talk about defence winning big games. The Kiwi Ferns' defence was fantastic, and then followed up by the Australian Kangaroos' defence. They just moved so quick, got off the line, and anything that New Zealand tried to do, they just snuffed it out easily. Buller, McCann looking dangerous, tripped up this time, and eventually held by Lamb. So he's out of play here on the last. Time for Wakeham to take over. Plenty of hang time here. Nene McDonald will take it on and come down with it. Monstering defence in the middle from Uniyaya and uh, Sakuru. Goes again. The King. Here's Russell. Strong finish to the season with the St. George Illawarra Dragons on the edge. Cops, cops a late forearm there from Donahue. Has a few words afterwards as well. Donahue goes again with a late swinging arm. He'll be public enemy number one in a minute, the way he's going, Kurt. After that try. Yeah, maybe just pull it back a little bit. <laughs> we'll look at the safe take. Goes to Micah. Oh, Sebo! Says to Mbappe, how do you like that? And who was actually doing the shoulder charging as Wakeham turns to the referee? This is our New Guinea, love it. Gets a bit feisty, listen to the crowd. We're salivating. Buller taking them on up oh, the oh, middle. Oh, oh. And he finds another penalty, copped a high shot, I think. Not quick, that one. We can see they're well on top. And you spoke about def defensively how well structured they are, especially around the ruck, PNG. But their discipline has been really poor. Geez, this bloke's what a player he is, Jareen Buller, and he's only going to get better and better. Well done to the West Tigers. I think they signed him up at a long term. 
you can imagine under Benji Marshall, he'll, he'll really advance his attacking game. But the discipline's been poor, PNG. Fresh legs off the bench. He's a big man, Gordon Whippy, the 22 year old. Donahue, flat ball. And the timing was good enough. Great tackle by DeBellin one on one. Now Donahue. And again, similar kind of pass. Quick play the ball from Tane Milne. Brilliant. Fiji right on the front foot and over. Right next to the uprights. All the momentum with the Barty. And it's Tui Kamikamitha. Well, to be fair, there was four tackles in a row there that had forward passes. They're just playing flatten up over the line. They got to the edge of the PNG team, targeting Cole Lay, but got the quick play of the ball and just jumped out of dummy half and come a Kamitha. Just too big. Martin comes in to make the tackle. Good luck. Yeah, that's a try. Slides over. That's a try. That was on the back of three really quick play of the balls. And then Fiji Batty's dummy half just got out. Look at the speed out of dummy half ball in two hands. No, he's not dropping it from there. <laughs> okay. Once the front row was see, they see that try line. There is no way they're dropping that ball. If it had a dummy half, it's the most dangerous spot to attack from. Any quick play yeah, the ball, yeah, yeah. the dummy half gets the line decision and the fact that momentum carries to each member can be the goal. The decision on the try will be supported. Captain for the second week in a row, and he's celebrating with his third try for his country. It was a great set, but once again on the back of poor discipline, given two penalties away, PNG Kummels and really cheap penalties. The Fijian coming out of trouble. They want to get their discipline right, especially in this heat and humidity. They haven't been doing too much tackling. Look at the size of those arms, Freddie. <laughs> How'd you like getting a headlock with those? <laughs> After drilling that sideline conversion, it's a straightforward look for Wakem to make it an eight point margin. Mate, you've already put the mock on somebody. <laughs> now, Breeze Martin early. I think Wakem will be fine here. Midway through this first half. Going through his routine. Eventually pulls the trigger and makes it 12 4. PNG playing catch up now. A great burst from Fiji with back to back tries. And the discipline costing the home team. Is that Gordon Whippy? He's a big, big man. 16. Yeah, he's got a background in swimming and athletics. Put up some shot put records at underage level in Fiji. Turning his hand to rugby league. And there's Milne driven backwards on the other side by the 5 8 Labour. That's a team lifting moment. Lucky last one. Swift. Held it. Held it. Release. Gets there on the full Johnston. Chase is elite though. Led by Ravalawa. We're talking about the New Guinea, number nine. I've got to say that just watching Tangi Tuamua out of dummy half for the Fiji Bardi, very controlled, classy, bit of deception both ways. He's quite a player as well. There's Robert Darby after the offload. Listen to the crowd getting involved here, asking for a penalty of their own to march up the field. Nothing doing. The discipline is good from Fiji Bardi. Strong run by Kevin Apo. 
Onto the ground now in the 16 jumper. No look pass for Lamb down the short side. Labour flicked it to the winger who wasn't there. He was let down there, Labour. His winger, Robert Derby, he took a hit up in the infield two plays before and just couldn't keep up. This was a real opportunity. The Gibbley flick out the corner. And you can see the disappointment on his wingman's face. Once again, poor discipline by the PNG Pumals. That's a club connection on that side as well. They both made their debut for the North Queensland Cowboys back in July against Parramatta. Leibert and Derby. He didn't recognise his voice. He was calling out something. I think he was saying, I'm not there. Don't pass. Confirmation of that start time in the bottom corner for next Saturday, 2.30 p.m. Coverage begins on Nines Wide World of Sports for that final across the ditch. Kangaroos against the Kiwis. A rare daytime test match. That'll be, that'll be sensational. Almost clean bowled the dummy half, but rectified the situation. Remember that test match where Wally did that hit? It was on Darrell Williams. Darrell Williams, yeah. There's good visions of a daytime test match between Australia and New Zealand. 1989. Poor There's play, a... the ball punished here. Oh, with, with this humidity, you can imagine the ball would be so slippery. A lot of fatigue in the game. I've been impressed with Fiji. We saw the Cook Islands improve week to week playing back to back games, and that's the situation for Fiji getting to back up mm. quickly. Whereas PNG have had the week off. Would you prefer to be in Fiji shoes or PNG? Uh, at the moment, probably PNG. Just for their key players who played a lot of footy together. But you, as you said, more footy together on the field. It looks like they're training paddock, but it's on the field where you build those combinations. The Cook Islands, the first week against PNG, they were legless. I know they lost their halfback early, but last week, oh, it was so much better. PNG looking for a spark. And the high stepping Kevin Apo looking to provide it. Earns the six again, the Bradford Bulls enforcer. It's the best ball they've had in a while. Ring a ding ding. Six again for the Kumuls. Derby takes them inside the red zone. And the crowd, the 14th man, as the players call them, getting inspired here. And DeBellin almost spotted a hole. Ebappe from dummy half and eyeing that try line, wasn't he, the big man? And took his eye off the footy. I thought there was room there for the hooker to take some more space up. You can see he got out. He was waiting for the defence to come to him. You see, he had to keep running. No one was coming at him. He put it on his lap and just dropped a sit of the front rower. He ended up over the try line. He just had to catch that. And he would have rolled over someone. So Carpinius blowing that opportunity off the no-look pass from Ibape. Plenty of action already in the opening 24 minutes here. Dumping tackle by Labour in company with Lamb and goes again from Marker and trips up the bigger man. Doesn't mind taking them on up the middle with that footwork, Jareen Buller. See that footwork. Nice to play. Getting in behind the, the markers. Wakeham just counting the numbers. Left it to the dummy half this time, and now the shift is on. Donahue. Going to shake Russell out of his boots. Kick will come from inside the 40. Tumble down by Wakeham. And Johnston able to get there on the full and bring it back towards halfway. Haven't utilised the breeze to great effect just yet. The Kumuls. Yeah. Oh. They've, got to play build, there. they've got to build the game again. The start of the game really well, but poor discipline. Penalties given away, drop balls. 
And they've got to go back and start building this game again. Clicked out the back. Again, Kevin Appa. Work rate is high since he's come off the bench. And now Lamb has to wait one over the top. Labor got there in time. Batted back to Reese Martin. He'll do well to keep it alive. And he's wrapped up by four opposition players from the party. It was a nice way to finish the set, bring the ball down. There's plenty of chases. It was great work by the lock, Navale. He's the one that comes across and cover. There he is. Wraps up the ball, makes the tackle, but also wraps the ball oh. up. Oh, this is dangerous. It's Fumi Ayawa, the victim of this tackle. And the bunker will be tipping up the referee on any further sanction here. And we hold our breath when the player is put in that position. Well, it's a natural style to tackle. PNG Connells. A lot to get down low and lift. You see, Mbappe gets down low and then he grabs the leg. Look at strong. And there's three or four players in there. And gets in an ugly position. First concern is with King Vuniayawa. 28 year old. This is a good sign getting back to the crouch position. But uh, what kind of sanction is it? Ibappe, who's the major offender here? Yeah, he's got his leg between his hand between his legs, and that's a no no. And you could see his reaction in. in he, it was a boo boo. Can't be a send off. I think it's just on report. That's enough. Why can't it be a send off? I just don't think it's a send-off. No. Ten in the bin? No, I, no, I don't think so. Penalty. I just I just think penalty sufficient. Put it on report. Kevin. Kevin. He's called that number 16. No, it was Kevin Apple. the wrong person. Well, the hooker did all the damage. Once you get the old Christmas hole, get your hand between their legs. You, if you got the ball, you can't do anything. Yeah. I think he's got the wrong bloke. Well, they have plenty of angles to survey in the bunker to try and find the Christmas hole. Is it the Christmas hole? I don't know. Whatever it is, I don't mind. <laughs> so down to 12 for the next 10. PNG already trailing by eight. Merry Christmas. After the lengthy delay following following the dangerous tackle. Touch finder from Wakeham and they can go again. And try and utilize this one man advantage. Abalawa to start. Big half time coming up for, for the PNG's coach, Justin Holbrook. Don't want to settle his team down. There's a drop ball there. And get a real opportunity. Bit of Archie Bargy again. First touch for Lobo Kuro. Well, the next 10 minutes is very important. They've now got the ball in, in great position. You've got to say Jack DeBellin. I don't know why they keep running at him. If I was doing anything, I'd be avoiding him. He's, his technique and detail in defence is fantastic. But they need, if they don't score a try, they need to get a restart and spend some time down this end and just drag this 10 minutes out. Get Fiji, make it as many tackles as possible. For the very first time, the NRL is heading to Vegas. Join us as Australia's most exciting sport is unleashed on the sports and entertainment capital. Rugby League unleashed in Las Vegas. Tickets on sale now. Visit nrl.com slash Vegas. Jump the gun there. Fiji looking to contain the likes of Nene McDonald. And this could erupt at any stage here. And the fans in the stands won't be too unhappy about that. It's just normal behaviour speeding. It's nearly 50 fights every game. Jeez, if it erupts, it'd be ugly, <laughs> wouldn't it? 
This is uh, this is trouble for Fiji. Error followed by penalty. Uh, usually brings on points. You want to hold on. Imagine on that left side, Lachlan Liam and Alex Johnson will get to work. Wellington Albert. Debuted a decade ago in that 2013 World Cup. Just onto the ground, there's Martin on the left edge. Playing with the Leeds Rhinos in the UK now, the former Bulldog in the NRL. And now right hand side for Lamb. Benji Cott trying to keep it alive, flicks it out the back to Johnston. Oh! Finished off in a real hurry by your man, Freddie. He's quite the player, the hooker. Thank to him more. Deft little pass from Ebape. And Albert had the arm free for a long time. Still two more plays here for PNG. Trying to score despite being down to 12. Flat service for Cott. They're letting those passes go here this afternoon. How can they cook up on the last? Bounce pass for Lamb. Out in front of Derby. Was that played out? It doesn't matter now because it's knocked on by Labour and Fiji stand tall defensively. A little bit frantic. They're going to put the scoreboard away. A bit of scoreboard pressure already. They're trying to score off every set. That was the last play. Easy to say from here, but I think Lockie Lamb should have looked to get some sort of kick away himself, build some pressure. They weren't in a very good position to spread again. The first time they spread, they had... 5 8 half, fullback, decoy runners. That time they're just too far having that player down. Just took a number away from when they come back to attack the left hand side. Making sure of his ball security this time. The interchange forward. Love Kuro. And now Donahue. Cott had to make the tackle one-on-one -on -one with Tane Mill and good quick hands. Oh, and it's still alive. Backing up Wonga Blake, he's got support, uses Donahue cleverly in search of a double. He'll get there and slide over. And Fiji have three tries on the bounce. Oh, beautiful play. And it's the surge in contact which gets the offload. And then it's all Calypso footy, offload, footwork through the line, one hand passes. There's some beautiful passes in this lead up. But moving the ball, coming out of trouble. She's on paper leading in this game. I, I thought PNG had put a real statement game on, on today, but just Fiji. Just that, just that being together at training, a fair bit of footy together. They've improved lengths and lengths. Great work there from Kurt Donahue. Yeah, the nice early pass coming out of trouble where he found Tane Milne and made the surge up the left-hand side. And now coming back through the middle, Neil's on the end of it to score the try. I think the pass from Buller, when the, the offload comes out the back, just watch when the pass comes out the back. Jareen Buller feels the pressure and he actually steps back a little bit to give himself room. Watch when this ball comes out. Steps back, quick hand, and then it's look, Calypso footy. Through the line, one hand passing. Footwork, surging, one hand pass, change of angles. Great footy. Great all, footy. All the middle players getting involved. Halfback, 5'8, fullback, playing key, key part to the try, just supporting through the middle. The defence is looking a bit ragged, new, the New Guinea team. Jareen Buller, he, he was a, a basketball prodigy, wasn't he? Yeah. I think Greg Inglis, did Greg talk him into coming back to rugby league? And Wakeham adds two more. Shock scoreline here in Port Moresby. And Fiji still have a few more minutes to play against 12 here after the sin bin for Apo. And the mood they're in, 
and feel like they can score in this set off the back of those points from Donahue. Strong defense in the middle. That was the man we thought should have been in the bin and Ibappe. Strong defense by Lamb this time in company with Rhys Martin. Still near enough to their own 20 meter line here. Fiji. Now Donahue glides around one. Gets it to Micah Sivo. Across comes Labour. Good luck. Oh. He stops him. That's a terrific effort on Micah Sivo. And then McDonald gets away with the second effort on the ground. Navale to play it on the last. Pressure on Wakem came from Russell. Oh, what a move. Alex Johnston spinning his way through a tackle. He started the scoring in this game when it was all PNG, but then Fiji took over. An important five minute phase before half time if PNG can find some momentum here to take into the break. And it's Derby with his best moment so far. Mbappe. And to bamboozle the markers. Nothing doing there. Now Martin. Lamb. Goes through the hands for Labour. Running out of room here. What about that contact? Ravalawa defending in that centre position. Unfamiliar to him. He just got McKaylee'd. He just grabbed hold of him. The key was there. He just tackled over the ball. He got him once early in the game. The PNG calls it Ravalara. Ever since then, they just haven't had any field position or any momentum. They put some questions to him. Some tough metres for the debutante there. There's a real speedster. Gaddy Gaddy. Playing in the Super League. Oh, coughed up again. Second time he's made the handling error, and this opens the door. The mistake from Novo Kuro. Well, the game's flowed with discipline and errors. And New Guinea with 12 plays with three minutes to go. Get an opportunity to, to put some pressure on Fiji. The try leading into half time would be handy. Also take the confidence into the second half. Scored their try from a centre field scrum. They load up here for Johnston, creating the overlap. Despite being down to 12, Derby tries to straighten up. And Buller getting a crossing cover in time with Wakem. Just in the nick of time for Fiji. Wait offload here for Epape. Contact by Tane Milne. There's a try appeared to be brewing. De Bellin helps out at dummy half. Lamb couldn't juggle it successfully. And Wunga Blake's on the counter attack. He could have caught a C though. And Micah would have been away. Well, they had the numbers. The pass just wasn't good enough. It was out too far out in front of Lockie Lamb. But they had the winger in the open space. There was a try gone begging. Labert onto Lamb, way out in front. There's Micah right in front of you. And you've got three players, three New Guinea players. Make him eventually able to play it. There's real potential up the middle here. Late in the half for Fiji Barty. Now rolling again. Oh, until that moment. Wellington Albert again. He's sore after that one, the big man. Donahue having a fantastic first half with that double. Ball comes out and a loose carry is the determination here. One last set coming up for PNG. Will they be tired? <laughs> 30 degrees feels they like look, 36. They look tired, don't they? Test for Wellington Albert after he stayed down following that 
Big hit a moment ago. He's right to continue. It was laboured again, just targeting the footy and jolting it free. He's a good player. Oh, Nene McDonald trying to create something on play one. Wunga Blake is concerned for his opponent's welfare here. Well, I think Mikey hit him right in the noggin. Stand there, Wellington. Whether it was chest or the shoulder came in, but he got sevoed. Martin trying to reef it out one on one. But they should be able to get through this set in its entirety here. Fiji Barty to try and post some more points before the break. Countdown on until half time. Donahue does juggle successfully. Wakem and taken out on suspicion. Asking for the penalty is Tane Mill. Short side, Buller this time. Quick hands, Wunga Blake and Donahue using Mike Acevo as the decoy. And then a McDonald flops in and just slowed things down. Wakem says, I'll slot the one and finish off the first half in style. And he's got it. A rare scoreline at half time here in Port Moresby. Yeah, just watch the body language coming off. Fiji lead this one at the break by 19 points to four. Thank you, Emma. And these same two teams will face off in the Pacific Bowl at this same venue next week. And Fiji party might be favourites by then, the way they're playing here, leading by 15 points heading into the second half. Remember, they coughed up the first try of the game very early on as well to Alex Johnston. Then they took over Donahue with two tries. Wakem with that late field goal to give them this 19 to 4 advantage. And they could be strengthened by some significant names. There's no Billy Army kick out, no Happy Chorus out. Siwa Wong played for them at the World Cup last year. He's now playing with Tonga. The Sims boys aren't there. Semi Valame, Taruva ruled out. You know, 10 of the current Bardi squad are actually under the age of 21. Four of the silk tails. Oh, nice charge down. And the retrieval as well from your man again. He has been the best player on the field by a long way. Thank to him on. And now Whippy off the back of it. Goes to Guni Ayawa, who recovered well from that scary moment when he was dumped into the turf that led to the sin bin. It's 13 on 13. Start of the second half. And Buller chimes into the back line. Trying to weave his way through. Hasn't been afraid to take on all comers today, Jareem Buller. Lovely delay on the pass from Wakem. And almost finding a way through was Navale. Now the short ball for Whippy. He'll take some stopping as well. And they got good contact on the big man. Straight back to Wakem to hang it up. Nene McDonald took off from the field of play, keeps it alive to Johnston. That was composure, and they're out of their own in goal. You don't see that too often. It was nice he used the referees an obstruction. Smart work by Alex Johnson, and draws the penalty. The kick was perfect, dropped a metre before the try line. Jareem Buller dragged him in goal. And Nene McDonald found his fullback and got out of the end goal and drew the penalty. It was a good start of the second half. They're back to 13 players. This first 10 minutes is so important. The scoreline doesn't matter in this first 10 minutes. They need to get back into the game, get a bit of fatigue into the Fiji team. Here's a look at that moment. Nene McDonald knew his fullback was there. Danger in that pass, but it came off. Albert met solidly by the King. of the English pace players head to head there. There's a big contingent of PNG players now playing in the Super League and we talked about the fact that helps them avoid the homesickness because they've got so many mates to discuss. 
English yeah, living with. The weather's very similar to Port Moresby to, <laughs> to Leeds or the north of England. <laughs> they have long summers. They Maybe the rainfall. That's a bit Their summers go for about three days. <laughs> Lamb's kick. And then McDonald is one of the chasers and caused confusion for Buller. And Russell couldn't keep it alive. But And it's not a knock on off Buller. So it's play on here for Fiji. And Mike Acevo from Broken Play eyeing up McDonald. He's been watching my, Michael Jackson videos on YouTube. I want to see that that dance again. Oh, it's on. It's been threatening to do this oh. for the entire game, and they didn't like the treatment dished out to Mike Acevo there. Well, Benji caught the centre, took it too far. The play was over, I'm not sure. The state of Acevo, but... Yeah, Benji Codd just took it a little bit too far. The, the tackle was over. The referee had deemed Jareen Buller come off his leg or, or chest. And Dan Russell was in a perfect position, but he was just thinking too much as he attacked the ball. He was worried about what he was going to do instead of what he, what he had to do. Look at this. We're having fun. And then the centre gets his once again, getting his arm between the legs, and nothing's happened to Micah. Well, he didn't really put him in a dangerous position. He just landed on his back. It was just, a, it got a bit personal between Micah and, and also Nene Nen McDonald. The referee's going to defusal mode here, keeping the players apart for a little while, and laying down the law to the captains. Well, it's the opposite of what the crowd want. But if it happens again, they won't be staying. They'll go. Come on, Chris. Well, stop playing like you do, eh? What's the penalty for? The tackle. Putting him just past the horizontal, man. And you got that breeze behind him too, Fiji. They say Brennan Wake has been impressive. The longer the game's gone on, the more comfortable he's looked. And he's off contract at the West Tigers as well. Future far from certain for a few of these players. Here he is, the number seven. Well, he needs to take control of his of his career, Brennan. He's a great schoolboy. He was most surely the best coming through. He's had a couple of chances at Canterbury and also the Tigers. Now you've asked the question before, who beat Kebra Park? high school and it was uh, Brandon Wakeham inspiring Westfield sports night in the schoolboy days here he is calling the shots organizing his team again slow play of the ball for Ravalawa oh almost a sitting duck there but great footwork from Funi Ayawa and now Wanga Blake goes to Sivo look out Micah bumps them off and scores a trademark try in the corner. And even though we're in Port Moresby, the PNG fans don't mind that from the big Fijian. Confirmed touch like grounding. Possible shoulder charge from PNG as well. I'm not sure what Chris Butler expected the winger to do. <laughs> there might be some sympathy there. But they were smart. They moved the ball quick. There was some space on the outside. And they just shuffled the ball through their hands. Oh. Nano McDonald. Mate, he goes low, honestly. Up in the contact, the shoulder charge. He scored the try. Mm. Somehow he keeps his check all available angles to see that Mike Acevo remains in the field of play. It'll be a disaster if he gets in by Nano McDonald. Well, by the sound of it. Like, if he goes low on Micah here, he'll end up at the high ones. He, he would just get absolutely swatted. Yeah, Micah keeps his left foot inside the, the field and then he jumps up, Rudy's, he puts his feet as he goes down, he lifts his back feet. And then tilts his body down so the ball lands before anything else goes out. That is brilliant. Talking about a hundred and fifteen kilo bloke. That is incredible. Just need to see that Mike Acevo is in the field of play with his left arm at the point the ball is grounded. Past the experienced Jared Sutton back in the bunker, just uh, 
Surveying all of these angles, I think it's uh, pretty obvious that the try has been scored. Mike Acevo remains in the field of play and grounds the ball. A scorer of 87 tries with the Parramatta Eels in just 103 games. And blowing out the margin here. 20 tries in 20 games for the Eels this year. And now even more and more Fiji flags are flying here at the Santos National Football Stadium in Port Moresby. Well, I'm glad they didn't send in Nene McDonald for the, for the shoulder charge. He's just defending himself. Big kick coming up with this strong breeze. Blowing down the field for a right foot kick up. These are the sort of kicks you love. You just put it out on that right upright and let it come back in. He seems to with his kick from the other side. He and shaped go, he, it. He, yeah, he sliced shaped, it. He shaped, shaped it the other way. Do you go outside the upright or right on the no, upright? No, you give yourself about a foot outside. Depends how strong the breeze is. But from the first kick, which it moved the other way quite a bit. And these kicks here, Daryl Halligan says you should never miss a kick to the left. If you're going to miss, you've got to miss it out to the right. You should never hook the ball. You see the flags flying oh, on you top of the stand. The breeze, can't you? Started out right. No. Chook wouldn't be happy. The try goes unconverted. PG have the luxury of a 19-point lead here. Short kickoff attempted into that breeze. Plenty of hang time and the bouncing ball there for Ibappe. And they're right on the front foot. They need points in a hurry, the hosts. McDonald fires it left. And Martin trying to put some footwork on. Brandon Wakem has support alongside him from the back row. Sakuru. Back to centre field, winding up. Wellington Albert. Yeah, good defence. Three in the tackle, plenty of time. Mbappe to Bellin. Oh, ball comes loose again. And Sebo Go, Micah. Look at Micah. Go, Micah. Out. The chase is on. Johnston getting to him. But Micah Sebo goes back to back in a hurry. Yeah, they try to shift the ball off a slow play of the ball. The Fiji Barty were well in control. And they moved the ball to the 5 8 lay, but it was just a lot of pressure coming from the defence. Just got up in their face. Just looking to see if the Fiji team have knocked the ball on during contact. The Bellin goes to the line. Labert sweeping around. You just look at the blue jerseys up in the line. Yeah, just looking at determining how the ball comes out. Pierce. Well, that's a try. He just marks, he just messes that up the 5 8. We spoke about the control the Fiji team had with the tackle. Just looking for another alternate angle just to ensure that the ball is lost by Zach Labor. It's lost. Yeah, no doubt it touches a Fiji player, but Labor just drops it. That's, uh, that's the second minute of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to the 48. Still waiting for an alternate <laughs> angle to see how the ball is lost no by doubt. Zach Labor. Here we go. No, he just gets, he Same gets, angle. Here he we gets go, tighter angle. outside in. And the ball just pops ball out. ball is lost on contact by Zach Labart. We're playing on to this point. And then with that big breeze behind him, Micah puts the spinnakers up. <laughs> you know, 
they're not going to catch him there. Like, honestly, how big and strong, and look how fast he is. Alex Johnson's hardly made any ground up on him. We've got the Sevo chant. The ball is grounded by Mike Sevo. Headlines this week. Or how PNG were going to contain Mike Sevo. Easier said than done. I was talking before about the, the Fiji team. Ten of the current squad are actually under the age of 21. So this is a place, a country, a nation that are actually looking to develop a team and make it a lot stronger and competitive. Are you saying they've got a team in the juniors next year in the New South Wales? So they're looking to get a Jersey flag team in the near future, maybe, Jersey, maybe next year. Jersey, Jersey flag is under 21. Under 21, yeah. And there's also a game going to Fiji next year. The Storm will play the Knights in a trial match. Easier look for Wakem. Slots at this time. G. Barty literally running away with it right now. Short kickoff attempted again. Buller camped underneath it. Continuing his fantastic performance. Still half an hour to go. And it's a 25 point margin in favour of Fiji Barty over the Kummels. Tane Milne. And serving it up to Labor after that mistake that led to the most recent Sevo try as well. It's a nice move. Spinning his way through traffic. Big Gordon Whippy. Played some Jersey flag with the Penrith Panthers. Whippy. And played for the Ipswich Jets this year. Buller again drops it on the boot. Handy kick as well. Johnston had few alternatives. I wonder if Benji Marshall, the coach of the West Tigers, watching this game. Jareen Buller is just showing his class. That kick there, the grubber kick with a really strong bruise behind, behind you is a really difficult kick. He just gets the ball here. He'll go under the line, slow himself up, and then just find a beautiful touch. He is just class. Well, the good thing is, too, you can see players have got confidence in. That was the last tackle. He obviously called it, confident that he could come up with a play. And the halfback passed on the responsibility to the young fullback. Judah Rimbu just on in the 14 jumper, immediately involved in that tackle. Buller, no looker for Tane Mill. And Rimbu's first real contribution is to give away that penalty. It was the starting number nine against the Cook Islands a fortnight ago. With Ibappe suspended for that fixture. Seven. Wait for me, mate. Wait. Hold here. Okay. They won't bother with the touch finder. Jake and Bellatoy now. Has to go to work with the plays they've been working on. Trying to extend this margin. Tangituimua, creative from dummy half again. Good defence on their goal line that time from PNG. Now some space trying to be created. All the way through to Ravalawa on the bounce. So they burn one play there, but they've got a bit more room to move as a result. Set up play from... Yawa and now Wakem and Donahue. Ready to go to work. It goes to the 5 8. Stabs one in behind. That's too much on that. And that was a bit of a nothing set in the end. Yeah, it was. Once again, the hooker. A beautiful pass out of dummy half. Got Donahue 
over the advantage line. He's done a lot of classy things tonight, both with the ball and in defence. There he is again in the middle of it, the number nine. Bulldogs lower grades. Watch this space in the years to come. Tries to break through it on the senior level. Up over halfway for the Kumuls. Rimbu giving Abape a chop out in that dummy half roll. Russell. VG trying to put a shot on or two. No damage done there. Hands bang for a penalty. Quick hands from Labour. Oh, look out. Intercept was on. First touch from Wakeham, I think. VG first. Yep. Six more coming up for PNG. They've got to get to work, PNG. It's been really disappointing. On paper, looking at this game, before the game, I thought PNG would put 20 or 30 on the Fijian team, but they've been really disappointed. Up the beginning. They need to treat this last 26 minutes, 27 minutes, like it's the start of next week's game. Just get a little bit of control. They need to win this last 26 minutes. You know what they're like. Once, once they start attacking, it sticks. Three or four tries. <laughs> Just behind Valentine Richard, the apology comes from his dummy half. Headlines today about the very real prospect of an NRL team coming out of PNG in the next few years. Anthony Albanese, the Prime Minister, is backing it. Talk that he's uh, been talking that over with the US President Joe Biden as well about the strategy involved. Yeah, he loves it, Joe Biden. He loves rugby league. <laughs> loves yeah, big Knights fan. I used to grab him for a beer after the game all the time. Didn't he celebrate hard? After the 97 grand final, Albo was out of control. Oh, sorry, Joe Biden. Albo was, was more 2014 with the bunnies. Yeah, but Joe Biden loves it. <laughs> Peter Belandis breaking wasn't a bad, bread this week. He wasn't a bad outside centre back in his day, <laughs> Joe Biden. <laughs> Hello if you're listening, Joe. But the enthusiasm of these PNG crowds, if they could have their own team in that competition. Well, it's an exciting time for Papua New Guinea Rugby League. It's the only country in the world where rugby league is the number one sport, other than Australia, obviously. JFL's listening. They're yeah, really exciting times. Last tackle, Marcus! Expansion on the agenda. Here's Wakem. Plenty going on off the ball there, and an obvious penalty is blown despite the take from Derby. Under no pressure because the escorts were involved. They're getting a little bit careless in the PNG team. And they're looking at the score, and I'm not sure where the fact care factor is. against Lockie Lamb. Sparked them early, but hasn't had too much on offer since then. The PNG number seven. It'll be a replay next Get week. The These two teams playing at this venue. It's a big week for the... For the oh, here you go. And over the line. Bonnie's under the footy, but I think somehow he's worked it out and slammed it down. Another try for... Fiji and the celebrations for Navale. What's he going? Great pass from dummy half. He's only just on my longer lever. Replacing the very impressive thing to him up. Yeah, they can make the hard look easy, the Fijians, and this time they did that. Longer lever jumps out. For all money, he's going out the back. It hits the lock forward. He somehow holds the ball in amongst all that traffic and finds a way to put the ball down. 
Look, he's going out the back for all money. Like how? What a catch. Under pressure. Just on his left hip pocket. Do you think he meant to pass oh, to God, the no short idea. ball? It's to it... show it. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the biggest hands yeah. in Fiji. He has just stolen. He has scores. He has stolen. He dragged it out of his own. He's pickpocketed his own. He gets it down. He's only 20 years of age, Caleb Navale. He won the Player of the Year award for Manly's Jersey flag team this year. Led the way in run metres and post-contact metres and the skill level on full display there. Tries being converted. Not talking about some exciting time for PNG, also for, for Fiji Rugby League. Now Petro Sibnasev is doing a lot of work up there. Getting their juniors into competitions here in Australia. Remember his dad, Eparama Navale, played for Parramatta 97 98 on the wing. Yeah, I think I've still got his footprint on my chest. <laughs> and straight over the top of a few times. And even the short kickoff was a long way off being executed by PNG. They just look flat. Well, it's just the pressure we spoke about in the first half the poor discipline, giving penalties away. Dropping balls, coming out of trouble, and just handing up that cheap field position to the Fijian team. And then with that, put a couple of tries on that scoreboard pressure. They've been really poor today, the PNG Cornwalls. Yeah, look how fit the Fijian side looks. You imagine putting facilities over in that country and have pathways for young kids to come through. They're so athletic. That's the same with the New Guineans. You can get some pathways, you can get some facilities. Ravonu's just come on as well. Oh, and now Milne forced it out the back and not quite there in time. Wanga Blake, it was that close to another four-pointer for Fiji. It was a half-hearted pass and a half-hearted catch, I think. Beautiful pass by Wakeham, goes to the line. And Milne somehow tries to get around his body. And Wanga Blake's just a bit too far back. But a lot of players in movement. You can see he's got all the energy, the Fiji side, all in defence as well. The number 19, Masake Ravonu. He's been playing Jersey flag for the Bulldogs, and Gus Gould's been passing on a story or two about his background. He came first game for the Bulldogs, tore his ACL, and didn't tell anyone. Played the rest of the game, then went back to Fiji and got run over by a taxi. Broke his foot. True story, Freddie's. And then he came. Stretching it at all? Is no, there any no, stretch no. in that? No, there's no Pinocchio no. stuff going on. And then got back on the field. And then a syndesmosis. Phil Gold said he's the toughest, one of the toughest and most dedicated young blokes he's seen in the game. So keep an eye on him, Bulldogs fans. And just watch out for those taxis in Fiji. <laughs> Right, there he is, right on cue, making a tremendous legs tackle on Rimboot. He thought he was away. No longer leave it, was trying to reef that out one on one. So, some go forward here for PNG, some much needed go forward. Carpinius back on for his second stint. He's made 60 appearances in the queue. Cut with the PNG Hunters and earns the six again. Oh, Tane. Oh, did Lachlan Lamb know it? He drops it on the boot, gets another set. Oh, that was a very early kick in the count. Well, he mustn't have heard. Tane Mill was a ridiculous six again. He had control of the tackle, he had control of the set. But he just couldn't help himself and antagonise. The New Guinea player and Lockie Lamb on the first tackle puts a grubber in behind. This game is chaos. I love it. So our player being treated for cramp, but we play on. That's off the Run his head. Carpinius, oh. chance to wind up, oh. and he ran straight into it. That man, that oh. young man, Ravonu. Jacob Arlick. We saw a play on the back row 
last week coming off the bench today for his seventh test the Gold Coast Titans youngster Lamb again no way through for Martin who held it in contact against Wakeham it's popping up everywhere Ravonu defensively they worked it out this time and finally a chance for the home fans to celebrate just their second try of the ball game what about the commitment in this line by Benji Cott? It's Lockie Lamb at dummy half, I think. He jumps out and he's just too committed. A little bit of space around the ruck. The dummy half takes a couple of steps forward. And there's just no one going to stop Benji Cott. Look at the physique on Benji. No, it's Alex Johnson. Just pops out, get the attention of Brandon Wakeham. Need to be like hitting granite. Oh. <laughs> How many burners you reckon down, down your arm trying to tackle him? Look at that. Well, you know how strong Ravalawa is. He throws everything at that tackle, and Benji just runs straight through it. Look at those celebrations as well for Benji Cott's try. He scored 19 of them in 41 games for the PNG Hunters over the past three years. So knows how to find his way to the try line and see how Reese Martin goes this time with the conversion attempt. Blasts it through. Converted try to PNG brings the margin back to 25 points and Reese Martin returned from that conversion trying to fire up his team and get the crowd more involved as well. One of the leaders of this team probably following on from what you said Freddie just trying to build towards next week in this final stanza of this test match. Yeah, final, uh, the final 17 minutes this will be entertaining. PNG the Commons will throw this ball around. Oh, King legs taken from underneath him. He wasn't expecting that. Ravonu really making his minutes count here. Already made a stack of tackles. Could play the ball here for Rimbu to go to work with that footwork. Wakeham complaining about getting taken out. Able to get involved in the tackle ultimately. Gives it everything. Fiji not interested. So the bouncing ball takes a bounce for Fiji. That's twice now. Lockie's kicked the ball and it's found the ground. And it's more through bad luck that New Guinea haven't found some points or a bit of joy on the end of it. Another stumble in the turf before contacts. Jerome Bull is okay. Sivo, still plenty of time to complete his hat trick. No stranger to those. Parramatta Eels man. Donahue, another with a double in this game. Fired it to Kami Kamitha, the try scorer, as well, the front rower. And captain of Fiji, Barty Buller. Cut out pass. Here's the debutant. The speed star. Here's his moment. You won't catch him. Shut the gates. Gunny, Gunny. A superstar of the future. A teenager. He is blistering in open space. Well, he got the ball off another superstar, Jareem Buller. He's been in the middle of everything good that's happened with Fiji today. And you just watch him. He hesitates. Gaddy Gaddy when he gets the ball and he sees a bit of open space. He moved through that quick. It looked like he must have 
been a shepherd or there been an obstruction because it just seemed to open up, but it was just the speed. Once he put the foot down, everyone was just standing there watching him. Green Buller comes down the blind side, just sees space, and look at that. Everyone just looks at him and just feel them called out. Yours? Well, Alex Johnson, we know how fast he is. Now watch when he gets in the clear. Just keep your eye top of screen, Alex Johnson. He gets nowhere near him. You see it's, sprinters. It's, it's a bit like Hemiso. It looks so easy. See the top of his body doesn't move, it's all legs. The real quick ones have a way of getting across the ground without trauma. <laughs> My arms and head to be spinning and swinging. He just glides across the ground. Wakeham adds two more. The Pacific Cup final kicks off next Saturday with another trans-Tasman blockbuster across the ditch in Hamilton. The Kiwis might be on home soil, but they'll have to overcome a Kangaroos side in red-hot form. Cam Murray scoring all those tries. You can catch every heart-stopping moment from 2.30 p.m. live on Nine's Wide World of Sports. What's that six in a row for Cam Murray? Yeah. So you've got to take in a World Cup final, World Cup semis. <laughs> you know, some big games. Tied up with Ronnie Coote, was he, with that record? One of the absolute greats. Oh, Buller again. What a game he's had. Just more on the Gary Gary story. First touch in the Super League as a 17-year-old, scored a try, just burnt them on the outside. Got an amazing backstory. He was born in Fiji, but then spent some time in Germany as a very young man and then relocated to Yorkshire. And he wasn't sure what his future was. And then he watched Fiji play in that 2013 World Cup in the UK. And that inspired him to chase his rugby league dream. And here he is making his own debut today. Because they played in the semi-final, didn't they? The yeah. Fiji team that year in 2013. And he was asked recently, like, would you play for England if the opportunity came up? Because he could play for England or Fiji. And he said, no, no. Fiji all the way. And he's got that moment on debut. We we're just waiting for him to get involved. And he flashed in. And here is another opportunity. Have to hand it over this time on the last. No, in fact, it's a penalty. They weren't back on side. Do you think they can regroup Freddie and challenge next week, the PNG yeah. Cummels? They will, won't they? Yeah, for sure. They also listened to the game last night. The losers normally take more out of a loss than the winners take by winning. 41's a pretty big score. And they're happy to go up in two right now. I don't, think take you, shot. I, don't, I don't think you can use the word loser anymore. It might be second place. Really? No one would offend, mate. I'll give him a medallion. he just have a big number two on it. Is this been, building towards next week, taking the two in this situation? I've, I think it's just a bit of a breather. The lungs would be burning, literally burning with this humidity. I've been really, really impressed with the Fijian bathroom. Mm. They have been really, really good today. Jareen Buller, he, like such maturity for a young bloke. And some of his touches this year for the Tigers, and we know the Tigers struggled this year. But some of his touches, think about that game at Bathurst when he stopped mm. Nathan Cleary from scoring that try. That was where a match he, winner. He just found a way. You see the trust he gets from his players. A fifth tackle, whatever tackle it is, any try scoring opportunity, they want to get it to him. 43 points to 10. The ICC Cricket World Cup continues tonight on Nine's Wide World of Sports. Host nation heavyweights India may well issue last rights to England. They are battling, aren't they? The Poms in the World Cup. They're Netherlands. <laughs> now, are they coming last in their group? Well, it's all one group. Everyone plays each other once, and they've got one win. They are the reigning world champs, of course. They'll definitely be out if they lose to India, who loom as the favourites in that comp. Mind you, Australia are really coming good, aren't they, the Aussies? Just got home with that high total against New Zealand last night. That was unbelievable. This time, the short kickoff does come off, and PNG get the footy back. Did you see the tailenders just going the tonk? They're 27 off and over. Pat Cummings. Captain. How big are the grounds? Well, it's just six after six. Well, that was at altitude as well. That mountains in the background last yeah. night, so the ball just flew at that venue. Stark. What a nice catch he caught. 
What about Travis Head being injected into the lineup as well for the first time in that tournament? He hasn't played for a couple of months, has he? That's pretty close Travis to Head. Nepal up there, isn't it? The Mark Hughes Foundation are over there at the moment. And Trent Robinson's with them on the, walk, on the trick. They made it to base camp. They made it, yeah. I think they're back in Kathmandu. A couple of my mates are there. They mightn't make it home. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing effort. Yeah, a lot of money raised. There's been another charity fundraiser recently for the Mark Hughes Foundation, and Trent Robinson bid on uh, Daily Cherry Evans' origin boots. Didn't Hopefully take them home, though. Someone else overbid him. <laughs> oh, nice footwork. Labour. And the kick as well. Blocked by Fiji. Not played at. Oh, Carpidius, the front row oh. high stepping and almost had his head taken off. It could explode again here. Trying to find out who that was. And Tane Milne has been taken Milne. out of the vicinity. Yeah, that's a couple of times. He gave a, a six again that led to a bit of joy from PNG not long ago. He just needs to calm down. He started doing such a great job. He needs to show some NRL experience here and be a leader. There's a few boys out the back. Imagine what it's going to be like next week when a trophy is on the line between mm -hmm. these two. Yeah, it'll be a different game. There'll be some leftovers from this encounter and moments like that. Well, it's, they got personal today half a dozen times. Well, back in the old days, it, it'd be, you'd imagine. Hey. I like to play it here. Five metres out. Consolation try on offer for PNG. Rimbu. Sure squeeze his way through, but Wakem was determined, wasn't he? Wrapped up the footy. What a fumble again from Alec. No damage done, but burns a play midway through the tackle count. Rimbu keeps it in tight. Oh, the front rower follows through. And the celebrations begin for Carpinius. You wouldn't know his team's trailing by 30. Well, all the dummy halves today have done a brilliant job. Lovely bit of class here is by the reserve hooker. Gets out from dummy half and just allows the defence to come to him. They tend to brace for the tackle and he just puts a little kick in between their legs. And Capinius shows his mobility. What an athlete. It's a big unit, isn't it? Look at the it's rump. Size. This ball looked like it was going to go dead. And the jeans get their hand on it. I'm oh, growing confidence from this. I'm really looking forward to next week's game because you can imagine all week they'd be filthy on himself, the Kummels. A really high standard game. That's tries in back to back games for the front rower as well. He was on the score sheet against the Cook Islands. Well, the Australian Open returns to Nine's Wide World of Sports in 2024. Don't miss the world's best tennis players descend on Melbourne for one of the country's great sporting spectacles. You can catch all the heart-stopping action live from Sunday, 14th of January on Nine's Wide World of Sports. You read Tom Brady will be down in Australia for the tennis. Wow. We'll be getting plenty of exposure. In the stands, no doubt. What an incredible athlete he was. And uh, he's good mates with Novak Djokovic, isn't he? And they're both able to achieve so much and beat Father Time. Oh. Oh. Coughed up from the kickoff by PNG off the back of that try. And now have to aim up defensively again. It's just like when you drop your ice cream. You get that feeling. You're so excited. You got your ice cream and then you just drop it. And Mr. Whippy. Oh, Gordon Whippy. <laughs> Look at this, everyone's excited. Big set of six. No. Nah. It's Nene McDonald. You just drop your Gordon Whippy straight on the ground. <laughs> there was a headline written about him, Mr. Whippy, in recent weeks. Nice double pump. Buller is being confronted. How does the referee see this one? Is it touched? No, saying the hand over. Buller knew it. 
holds his hand up. A rare mistake. He seemed in control there. The ball ended up going behind the speedster. He normally nails them. It would have been great to watch Gaddy Gaddy take on Johnston again. They're not punished for that drop from the kickoff. Strong run by Benji Cott. He charges, doesn't he? He's out of the Justin Allen mold. Rimbu. Nifty Neville Glover. Bellin. Avoided that contact. Tane Milne again trying to force the ball free. Labour, the lefty, bending it away from Sivo. He's trying to track it in flight awkwardly. CG get the ball back. Imagine that talent missing for PG. Some of those players we saw at the World Cup, if they could inject all of them back into this oh, lineup, yeah. how formidable would they be? Oh, they're building the Pacific Island nations. We've seen in the past few years what Tonga and Samoa yeah. have done. And Fiji, they're on the rise. Come on. And Ooh. with the pathways, as Freddie was talking about, and hopefully getting into the, the jersey flag, it's going to keep improving and improving. Oh. You think of Happy Chorus out, their best player has been their hooker. Happy plays halfback, doesn't he, for him? He's played a bit of halfback. I thought he played. Well, because Kurt Donahue actually plays hooker for the Dolphins. Yeah. And next week, Samir Taruva, you feel like it was precautionary a little that he was ruled out today with a, a slight calf concern. He's likely to come back in next week and strengthen them for the Pacific Bowl encounter. As we be, he's been impressive. Really impressive. Ball. Nice ball. Set up for Buller. One more pass may have been interesting in the middle there. Scouting wide, Vuniyayawa. Last tackle, lucky. Here is Donahue. Weaving his way through traffic, trying to put pressure on McDonald is uh, Tane Mill. That tackle was brushed off by Nene. Still going and keeping it alive. Combines with Johnston again. Great tackle again. That's the dummy half back on the field. Got some skills, doesn't he, Labert? Only a bit more room to move, so too Rimbu, and they're keeping it alive at all costs. Right, Labert will go again here. Until the King got him. And out of dummy uh, marker, if you don't mind. The back-to-back -back tackles from Ayawa. to Bell and push the pass after the held call. There's Carpinius, one of the try scorers. Not the connection Labert was looking for inside the final two minutes in Port Moresby. Two teams will square off in the Pacific Bowl. Same venue. Same time next week. And on the Saturday, it is the Kangaroos against the Kiwis from Hamilton. All coming your way on Nine's Wide World of Sports as the rugby league year comes to a close next weekend. And we'll go again. Las Vegas early next year. Much adventure here Come might on. be their final set. Donahue kicks with discipline into the corner for Nene McDonald, who's used Johnston a lot. 
And no chance to offload this time as Wonga Blake. Not there to wrap up the footy. Look at that energy in the 80th minute. 80th minute, and they're still surging. Two, three players in the tackle. You can see how much it means to the Fijian team. They've been excellent. Look at that. They're physical. To Bell and Ball playing. And get Labert into space. Not quick after the penalty was blown. Siren about to sound. One last play coming up for the home team. Fiji Barty already celebrating. The Labuts combine and that kick sums up. PNG's day, Donahue happy to throw it into touch and end this game. What a performance without Taruva. Out with injury today at the Fiji Barty stun PNG in Port Moresby and win this one big time by 43 points to 16.